Hello there and welcome. Today we're going to talk about the new Mido Ocean Star Decompression Timer 1961 Turquoise. I came across this watch by accident through a post on Instagram before it was even on sale. It's a limited run of 1961 pieces and the second release of this watch. My first thought was that it looked very quirky with the tiny minute hand and the rainbow dial. After reading up on the last limited edition, the black version of this watch, I knew I had to order it. Everyone loved the previous iteration and it sold out before it even hit the shelves. So I set out to find a seller. A small jeweler already had pre-orders open below retail price with an extended warranty and first service included. I had to wait over a month and a half after buying it, but I finally got the watch. Let's start with the history of this piece. In the late 1950s and early 60s, every brand made diving watches. For example, Omega produced their first Seamaster 300 in 1957. During this exciting time, Mido also wanted to bring something to the table. And they did, with the Mido Ocean Star. Then, in 1961, the decompression timer was launched, with just the right number of colors and innovations to set it apart from the other divers. It featured the Ocean Star's Aquadura sealing system paired with a monocoque case, rotating diver's bezel and a decompression scale to ensure the water resistance and utility for divers. The company was the first to build a monocoque case. Monocoque means that the entire case is made of a single piece of metal, so there is no screw down case bag. The watch became a top seller for Mido and one of the original pieces today costs around 10 to 15 thousand dollars. With a price of 1250 dollars, the new version is basically a bargain, even if it's not exactly the same as the old version. This limited edition is closer to the original with its silver dial, but it does not have a monocoque case, metal bezel or 300 meters of water resistance. Before I go into what the modern decompression timer offers, I want to explain decompression and the scale this watch offers. If you dive at a certain depth for longer than the no decompression limits allow, gas enters your bloodstream and dissolves into different tissues. During the ascension, nitrogen diffuses back from the tissues into the blood where it's perfused back into the lungs and breathed out. If you do not decompress long enough, you will develop decompression sickness, which can lead to death. To prevent this, you need to stop for a certain amount of time at a certain depth. And you can determine this with the decompression scale. Usually, you always have a dive computer with you these days. But a watch is still a good addition. To determine your decompression time, you need to know your depth and the time you were at that depth. You can determine this by setting your minute hand to 12 o'clock before the dive or by using the rotating bezel. Take your rounded up dive time and look at the corresponding minute marker. From there, go to the ring that corresponds to your depth. The value there is your decompression time at a 3 meter depth. So, if you've been diving for 25 minutes at a depth of 40 meters, you need to decompress for 30 minutes at a depth of 3 meters. To measure the time, you can again use the rotating bezel. This is also the reason why diving bezels can only be turned into one direction. You can never accidentally adjust them to make the decompression time shorter, only longer. But that doesn't hurt. Enough about diving. Back to the star of the show, the Mido decompression timer. The watch is powered by the Mido Caliber 80, which is basically a Powermatic 80 or a reworked ETA 2836-2. It has a power reserve of 80 hours at a beat rate of 21,600 and is usually accurate within a cost range. Since it's basically an ETA movement, it's a proven workhorse. 
But the new beat rate brings a bit of a problem. While the beat rate makes 80 hours of power reserve possible, the emptier the power reserve gets, the less accurate the watch becomes. If you either always wear the watch or put it away for long periods of time, this may not be a problem, but if you put it away for only 3 days, the accuracy can drop to plus 16 according to some tests. To be honest, this is a niche criticism that most people won't notice or even care. This already concludes all my criticisms. The silver dial with the rainbow decompression scale looks beautiful from any angle and screams summer like no other watch. Also, the readability is better than the previous black version of this watch. With a thickness of 13.4 and a diameter of 40.5 mm, this piece is big but by no means bulky. It has the ideal proportions for a diver and the metal bracelet just completes the package. No hair pulling, even though it's mesh, and because it's mesh, it fits perfectly around your wrist. There is also a textile and a leather strap included. Both the bracelet and the straps have spring bars with quick release mechanisms. Which is bad news if you want to wear the watch on a NATO strap. The sapphire crystal is domed and unlike any other crystal I've ever seen. Why you ask? Its curvature is not insanely steep, but it does extend quite far into the dial, which creates some interesting distortions. These distortions only affect the outermost part of the dial. This is the loom plots and the Swiss made text. Therefore everything is still legible. And this is not a criticism, just a remark. You can decide for yourself whether you want to admire the various distortions or not. To be honest, my opinion of this watch is clear. For $1250, you get a watch with a precise workhorse movement, multiple scraps, a sapphire crystal, a beautiful finish, dial, an interesting feature and history. What more could you expect? Well, due to the limited edition and the great interest of the watch community, you can expect an increase in value after purchase and possibly in the future if it's not reissued every year. If you like the style of this watch, it's your price range and you're still able to get one for a decent price. Go for it! It's a great first watch or a great tenth watch and there are hardly any flaws. The Swatch Group may not be a fan favorite, but they certainly know how to make a watch. Do you like the crazy colorful dial? I definitely like it and hope to see more watches like this in the future. If you liked the video, please leave a like and if it wasn't your cup of tea, tell me why in the comments down below.